So in this study, we compared the entire genome of almost 17,000 people with anorexia nervosa and 55,000 controls. And what we were able to do was locate eight positions on the genome where there were differences between those two groups. And what that does is that sort of signals where risk genes for anorexia nervosa might lie. And this is an, an amazing beginning because we now know genes absolutely play a role. We've got the first eight in our pocket, and we're expecting that there will actually be hundreds of genes that influence risk for anorexia nervosa. So in that sense, this is really an important inflection point in our work, and it validates the work that we're doing on the genetics of anorexia. Now, a second very interesting finding from this study is actually how the genetics of anorexia fit in with other disorders and traits. And we did some correlations between the genes that influence risk for anorexia, all the genes that influence risk for anorexia, and those that influence other traits. And what we found was a positive genetic correlation between anorexia and many other psychiatric illnesses, including obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, and anxiety. And this is really interesting because we see this all the time in the clinic. People with anorexia nervosa commonly have OCD. They have anxiety disorders. But now we know why. Now we know that the reason is that the same genes are actually influencing risk for those disorders. But what's really novel about this study is we also observe genetic correlations with a whole slew of metabolic and anthropometric traits like body mass index, weight circumference, um, insulin resistance. So now this tells us that there's actually a metabolic origin to anorexia nervosa as well. And that's why we're suggesting that we now really need to think about anorexia nervosa as a metabopsychiatric disease. I think these findings both validate what parents and patients have been telling us for a long time and also offer them hope for the future. Parents have always told us there's much more to this than the psychology. My daughter or my son was fine one day and then all of a sudden almost like a switch went on or went off and it started this descent into anorexia nervosa. And often patients will want to gain weight, but they can't. And one of the things that we see so often is we'll bring someone into the hospital and re-nourish them, we'll stabilize their weight, but they often get kicked out of hospital too soon before their bodies have really had a chance to re-equilibrate at that healthy weight. And then invariably what happens is they get discharged and they lose weight again. And we get into this revolving door pattern where they come into the hospital and relapse, come into the hospital and relapse. And that is so demoralizing for patients, for parents, and even for the caretakers. So I think this study is really telling us that we need to focus on both the psychiatric and the metabolic factors. And by doing that, we might improve the treatments that we're able to deliver to these individuals. And then hopefully down the line, we'll actually be able to develop medications that target the underlying biology of the illness.